Okay, I'm not muted. We're good. Okay, um, so the final project, um, making a uh, 2D convolutional neural network uh, algorithm that can uh, separate cats and dogs, right? Pictures of cats and dogs. Um, so uh, introduction, Kaggle held a competition um, in 2014 to discern whether photographs featured a cat or a dog. Uh, we'll explore how to utilize Keras to develop a 2D convolutional neural network. Uh, they may have you know, competed in that competition. So method description, um, we utilize the Keras sequential API to create a simple network for, with a few convolutional uh, 2D layers. Uh, cooling layers as well as, as well as a dense network at the end to make the cat or dog prediction. Uh, we made some generators that conducted some image pre-processing and resized it 224 by 224 pixels. Um, and we tried uh, fitting that work for 30 epochs. Again, going back to class, stuff we learned. Um, an epoch is, you know, a cycle almost, and at the end of each cycle, uh, weights or biases, you know, get updated. So we did 30 epochs here. Uh, we can observe that the model starts to overfit. Again, overfitting the data is uh, overtuning the data. Um, you know, we do that, um, the, the algorithm starts to memorize things instead of actually like, you know, um, generalize and, and make uh, general uh, generalized decisions instead of just memorizing. Um, so we can observe the model starts to overfit the data uh, almost immediately when plotting the results um, and the code to do all this is attached. Um, the training accuracy is improved until it approached 100%, uh, whereas the validation set peaked at roughly 84% and uh, lost ground as training progressed. Uh, adding the dropout. Uh, to make the model more consistent, we include a dropout. Um, dropout helps prevent overfitting um, by removing you know, the, the outliers, um, by removing the percentage of neurons, set their value to zero, or remove them by setting their, their value to zero, rather. Uh, each update during the training period. Um, by sprinkling data at random, the, the network's able to avoid becoming too smart and essentially uh, memorizing the training data, uh, allowing it to generalize more data effectively. Um, adding data augmentation. Um, so the image data generator in Keras uh, allowed us to generate a variety of uh, random changes on an image. Um, we utilize this to create fresh photos to assist the network to learn because we're only training on 16,000 images. Um, there are limits to how much this can uh, help by the situation we saw a uh, significant improvement in accuracy. Um, the code um, attached, uh, you know, the code I attached um, generates um, a data generator that takes an image from the training set and returns significantly altered image, altered image rather. Then we increase the steps for e epoch by three times so that way we're training on 48,000 photos rather than 16,000. Um, training should be significantly faster, significantly faster if you can utilize more modern hardware, but we're using um, old, you know, laptops or whatever we have um, laying around, or if you can, uh, it'd also be faster if you use, um, you know, cloud-based GPU, uh, but in this case, I'm using a pretty old laptop. Um, for building the networks, um, PyTorch Hub allows you to download the models that have been pre-trained on uh, ImageNet. Uh, we want to freeze all the parameters except the best form layers because they're trained to the mean and standard deviation of ImageNet, and we may have lost some uh, signal if we didn't. Um, instead of the thousand classes from ImageNet, uh, the model was trained on. We wanted to replace the classifier um, so we can make predictions on our data set. Um, for the function, actually, for, for training and loading the data, uh, we created a training function for the model and then wrote some code to load and process the photos we were using uh, for training, testing, and validating, um, and double checking the figures were correct. Um, training and testing the models. Uh, for a few epochs, we trained the re with the ResNet uh, 18 model. Uh, we could have waited a little longer and used a larger batch size. Um, but that would require, you know, like an unfeasible amount of time. <laughs> so, you know, settings may be fine. Um, we then compared our results to the holdout test set and also with our ResNet 34 network. Uh, this gave us two models, one with 93.0 uh, accuracy and one with 91.1% um, accuracy. Um, for the experimental results, uh, taking a look at a few of the test photographs individually, we explored how we can save the models to the disk and then re reload them so we don't have to train them every time we open Jupyter notebooks. Um, the brilliance of ensembles is that um, we can, you know, make predictions and reach uh, 9, 0.93089, which is higher than any individual model. Um, given two models with accuracy of, you know, 0.92 and 0.91, uh, the loaded image was then scaled to fit into a data set into a, a single sample. Uh, to mirror the way the data was prepared during the model training, uh, the pixels were also centered, um, which is implemented by the load image function, uh, which returns a loaded image that is ready for categorization. Uh, for conclusion and key insights, uh, using the uh, convolutional neural network algorithm, we were able to attain a uh, training accuracy of 96.53% and a validation accuracy of 95.84%. Um, uh, and we're unable to assess the total test accuracy because the labels are not provided uh, for the test set on Kaggle. Uh, contributions of each member, uh, the project was completed as a group of one and acknowledgements, uh, the author graciously uh, thanks um, Professor Ahmed Seton, uh, Anna Seton. Uh, TAs, uh, Hong Yi Pan, and uh, Dia Badawi, and uh, as well as Sally Atisi. Uh, references are attached, um, and in the, uh, you know, the appendix code list is attached as well. Uh, if we want to run through the code real quick, we can see that, you know, we got an end result of 95.84. Going to the top and explaining things and relating to the class. So at the very top, we import everything. Uh, we see some um, familiar tools, right? We have um, 
uh, flatten and dense. We have uh, two uh, two D convolutional layers and also max pooling. Uh, we import the filter warnings. I'll highlight so we can follow along. Um, so we have you know some familiar things. We have uh, uh, ReLU, you know, for the activation functions. Uh, so we have some parameters of rectified um, linear unit, uh, atom optimizer, sigmoid, and um, cross entropy. Um, you know, here we we set the uh, sequential classifier. And then we add all the, the things we want. We have max pooling here, uh, strides uh, of two. So instead of you know moving one pixel by one pixel at a time, uh, the stride size is larger. So we skip over one, um, makes things a little bit faster, but also lose a little bit of accuracy. Um, so we have max uh, pooling. We have flattening it. Um, um, you know, using the, the activations we want there. Um, you know, activation functions of ReLU and Sigmoid. We, we already class um, and some. Some optimization. Um, so for augmenting data, uh, we have shearing, uh, random zoom, and horizontal flips. Uh, we covered this a little bit in class. We didn't go too deep into it, but it, it like it comes with the field of uh, image manipulation, right? So uh, so we import everything here, right? Then here's the image data generator. Um, we have this, the shear, zoom, and, and horizontal um, parameters set here. Horizontal being um, set to true. So we test everything uh, with a training validation set. Um, here we see both of them being implemented. Um, we have batch sizes um, for both being 32, and the target size, again, like we've mentioned before, 64. Um, 64. Um, shuffle is set to false to each, and you know we have some, some classification going on here. Um, here's the generator. Again, uh, for this situation, we have 200 epochs. Epochs, again, being the cycle at each epoch weights or biases, as they may be called, are updated. Um, validation set and validation steps and all that. The stuff. Um, so we import. So now we have prediction of a, a single image. Um, so we import everything. We test with a cat image that we have um, with a batch size of one. And we, we have the logic to see, you know, and kind of judge. Um, importing everything, pandas, you know, setting the file name. This is all um, stuff that was. Uh, it's like nitty gritty file manipulation stuff, right? Opening and saving files and all those things. Um, those little uh, roadblocks that you can come across while coding. Um, and here we have uh, displaying everything. On size file name, um, test set prediction. And I don't want to uh, drag on too long, but we, here we have um, you know, some, some images that are classified and some of the example images that we have um, that we use as well. So uh, here we have some examples of some, um, you know, cats being misclassified as dogs and dogs being misclassified as dogs or cats rather. Um, so here are the uh, the layers. Again, uh, you know, loading uh, familiar images and then uh, you know performing some two D convolutions on them. Then we have a single convolution uh, output and uh, the other, you know, some other examples of other images. And then we have the second uh, convolution uh, output. Again, noticing the um, parameter sizes of columns and rows uh, for the outputs of what we want. And then here we have um, like randomized data. Um, that's like you know testing or training rather. Um, so here we have the training accuracy and the validation accuracy. And then the validation uh, accuracy of 95.84%. Um, and then, so this is the video submission, um, and then code is attached um, to the, the paper. So thank you, it was a great class.